Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Transport Fever 2. The title of this video is, The Problem with 100 Trains is... Well, I suppose you could end that sentence a whole bunch of different ways. Today, we're going to explore those problems and discuss the solutions. Let's get started. Now, before we get too far along, just remember that the random map seed, the map format, the mods used, and other details of this game are noted in the description of the video. I guess the first thing I should do is demonstrate that I do in fact have 100 trains. And the easiest way to do that is to go to the vehicle statistics. So here, if we just go over to trains, if I just scroll down, you'll see, eventually I'll get there, maybe I'll just zip down there, you can see I've got 106 trains. So the first thing I want to talk about is junctions. Junctions get complicated and congested as the number of lines and associated trains grow in number. And if you're not careful, the trains will start backing up or maybe even coming to a standstill. And eventually you'll start losing money all over the place as more and more trains end up standing still, waiting for each other. Sometimes it can be like gridlock. And there's a number of solutions to this problem. And the first one you see here is grades separating the crossings. Basically by building bridges and tunnels, you can completely eliminate any conflict. The next thing I find out that helps is signal placement. In general, the rule of thumb I believe is to make sure that the distance between signals is one and a half to two times your train length. When you start getting a lot of trains and long ones, believe it or not, I've had some success by spacing the signals just a little tighter at a few locations to keep things moving. Generally, I space my signals about 500 meters apart, but I find there's in some areas, especially near junctions, if I put them a little closer together, it just works out a little better. I'm not saying that always will be the case, but it just seemed to help. Otherwise, I seem to get a chain reaction of train standing still. My next point has to do with passenger trains versus freight trains. It's probably a no-brainer, but I find it best to keep the freight trains and the passenger trains on separate tracks. Generally speaking, the freight trains run a little slower, and they're just going to hold up the passenger trains anyway, so I don't mix those lines. And you probably knew that one anyway. My next point has to do with the number of sets of tracks you have on a transportation corridor. At first glance, it may appear that I've overdone it when it comes to track construction. And maybe I have. But if I click on the line manager icon, you'll start to see the number of lines I'm dealing with. In general, I've got about three or four lines on each pair of tracks. And I basically came to this conclusion by trial and error. As the train started to get congested, I just found it more efficient to add more track. I guess somewhere along the line, there's a point where you're just overdoing it. But I'm still making money. So the amount of track I've built doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. But I did reach the auspicious goal of over $200 million in monthly maintenance cost, which gets you the Big Spender Achievement Award or medal or whatever they call it. And that wasn't a goal I was aiming for, by the way. The next challenge is just keeping track of all your problems. And that's where your line statistics, vehicle statistics, and station statistics come in handy. Now these icons would come in handy anyway as they normally would. In this case, with a total of about 156 lines and all types of vehicles, those tools just get that much more handy to help identify and solve problems. Now that's not unique because you have a large number of lines and vehicles, but that is to say that these tools become even more valuable when things just start getting more complicated. The next problem I started to experience was computer lag. Now I'm not a computer person, but I thought I had a pretty decent gaming desktop computer. So these stats I'm going to talk about may mean more to you than they do to me. I have an ASUS Rogue Strix gaming desktop PC with a GeForce RTX 2070 Super Graphics card and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now I thought that was a pretty decent gaming computer, but I guess everything has its limitations. 
The problem you may or may not experience in your case will of course depend on your computer's capabilities. If I change the speed of the game to four times the speed, you can see what I mean. I'm getting a fair bit of lag there at times. It just gets just a little bit choppy. And I guess there's not much I can do about that other than upgrade my computer or get a new one. The next thing I want to talk about is solving line problems. And basically things just get more confusing when you've got a ton of lines. Because basically you've got colors everywhere. As always, if your line has a connection problem, you'll get a warning notice that looks something like this. It's just the more complex things get, the harder it is to find out where the problem is. But the basics still apply. If it's a newly constructed track, it's possible that you simply made an error in track construction and there's a break in the track. Now you can simply go along the track and do a visual inspection hoping that you're going to find where the error is. It works, but it's a little bit tedious. And there's the mistake. Now, of course, these mistakes are easy to correct once you find them. But there is a more, less tedious way to find an error like that. Now, this might not be the greatest of examples, but I hope it illustrates the point. If I go to trains and then signals, I like cursor right on the track. Now, I am using the auto signal mod. And I've got it set at not at one way and auto sig yes with a signal spacing of 500 meters. Again, this might not be the greatest of examples, but it illustrates my point. If I just click on there, I now have signals every 500 meters. And I will have signals every 500 meters as long as there's not a break in the track or there's a crossing. So now if I move along the track, I can see I've got signals every 500 meters. And then all of a sudden, they stop right about there. And that helps me pinpoint where the break in the track is. Now, as I mentioned, the auto signal didn't continue through this junction. So either I would do auto signal again or do a visual inspection to find another error, something like that. Another simple but annoying problem is a signal that's one way but needs to be two way. That's also easily fixed, but sometimes harder to find and that deals with that warning. This problem isn't any more different or more difficult than if you have less trains, but sometimes it can be trickier to find. And if all else fails, one way to diagnose any of these issues is to delete the line and start over, but construct the line in a more incremental fashion. So when constructing a new line, you could simply add stations and points incrementally. For example, there's a signal there, and there's one there. And if there were a problem, there would be a red line between those two dots. In other words, we would know the problem is between those two stations or those two points. In this case, everything's fine. Again, line and track construction problems are not unique to having a lot of trains. They just become more visually challenging to recognize and decipher when things get more complicated. I do have a mod, I forget the name, but it is listed in the description of the video that gives me more colors for the lines. So that does help me visually differentiate between all the different lines. My next comment is actually just an observation or opinion. It's not really a problem. One viewer had suggested to me that I try to do a better job at integrating the track system. I have to say that once you start doing that, when you start adding additional track and lines, it becomes much easier. It's easier because you're only adding tracks incrementally as you focus many of your trains on one corridor. And actually, I find it more fun. Well, that was a great suggestion and I'm glad the viewer took the time and effort to provide that feedback. My last point, again, is just an opinion. But as things get more complicated, it actually gets more fun. And in some strange way, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. Now, just for fun, let's just ride the rails and enjoy some of the sights and sounds of many of these trains.
Well, folks, I think that about wraps it up. These are the problems I've encountered with over 100 trains, and I've shared my thoughts on how to deal with these problems. So what do you think? Did I miss anything? If you're an experienced Transport Fever 2 player, maybe you've got some tips you can share with the viewers. Or maybe you just have some questions. Either way, please feel free to note these comments or questions or suggestions in the comments section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button below right now and click on the bell so you don't miss out on more great content. Click on that box in the bottom left hand corner right now to see a video you're almost guaranteed to love. This video was selected just for you by YouTube. And they know what you like. So what are you waiting for? Click on that box now, sit back, relax, and enjoy another video.